Orbiting our sun are numerous objects, such as the asteroids, comets, and of course the planets, including our own planet Earth. Because the Latin name for sun is Sol, we call this system of orbiting objects the solar system. In this chapter, we're going to be focusing on the dynamics of our solar system, and we'll also be learning some interesting facts along the way. To begin, I want to give you a brief introduction to the planets, their names, their relative sizes, and their relative distances from the Sun. We'll be talking about the details of each of these objects in subsequent lessons. As seen here, the planets can be divided into two major classes. There are the inner terrestrial planets and the outer Jovian planets. The terrestrial planets are relatively small. Let's take a closer look. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars. These are the rocky planets. They're basically big round rocks, each coated with a relatively thin atmosphere. Of these four planets, Mercury is the smallest, being not too much bigger than our moon. Next up in size is Mars. Both Mercury and Mars have very, very thin atmospheres. Venus and Earth, as you can see, are about the same size, though Earth is slightly larger. The atmosphere of Earth is mostly transparent, and as they say, only about as thick as an apple skin is to an apple. The Vesuvian atmosphere is about as deep as Earth's, but very dense with carbon dioxide and, get this, opaque clouds of sulfuric acid, which wouldn't be very hospitable to life forms now, would it? Neither Mercury nor Venus have a moon. Mars, interestingly, has two moons named Deimos and Phobos. The Martian moons, however, are too small to be seen from this distance. Zooming back out, we can see the outer Jovian planets. The term Jovian refers to the planet Jupiter. Coming from America, we would say you were American. Well, if you came from Jupiter, we would say you were Jovian. Hence, when we see the outer planets are all large and gaseous, like Jupiter, we say they are Jovian, or Jupiter-like. Hence, the outer Jovian planets are Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. This graphic shows the sizes of the planets relative to the Sun, but it does not accurately depict their relative distances. Nope. In fact, the planets are much, much farther away. Okay, now I've placed the planets to their relative distances to scale. Hang on now for an enlightening perspective. First up is Mercury, as shown by the blue arrow. Mercury is about 58 million kilometers distant. That's about 36 million miles. What I want you to notice most of all is that from this perspective, the planet is nothing more than a speck. And indeed, there are lots of objects in our solar system. But mostly what we have is empty space. Let's take a closer look at Mercury. And you'll see, it's pretty small, huh? Let's zoom back out and see that the next planet out is Venus. Venus is about 108 million kilometers distant. That's 70 million miles, which is about twice the distance as Mercury. Again, a closer look gives us the sense that these planets, they're mere specks compared to the amount of space right within our solar system. And of course, the third rock from the Sun is our very own dear planet Earth, which is about 150 million kilometers distant. That's mm, 93 million miles. Zooming into Earth, we see the relative distance between the Earth and the Moon. Take the diameter of Earth and multiply that by about 30, and there you have it, the distance to the Moon, which is a relatively close 384,000 kilometers. That's about 239,000 miles, which is about the number of miles you can get out of a well-maintained car, huh? As discussed in subsequent lessons, the Moon has played a key role in the history of our planet. The length of our days, for example, is a consequence of... Yeah, that's right, the moon. We've been able to use the moon as a tool to learn much about our universe, about how it works and where we are. The distances to planets, the distance between us and the sun, the distances to stars can all be measured because we have the moon there 
as a metric. Of course, the moon has also played a key role in the history of our human culture. We are very fortunate to have the moon. Not only is it beautiful in our sky, it has provided us an amazing perspective. Okay, then there's Mars. Mars is some 227 million kilometers distant from the sun. That's about twice as far as planet Venus and about 1.5 times as far as planet Earth. What about its two moons? Sorry, still too small to be seen here. Don't worry, we'll get to them later. And that sums it up for the interterrestrial planets. Now let's zoom to the outer Jovian planets. And when I say outer, I really mean out there. Jupiter, the largest of all our planets, is over five times farther from the Sun than planet Earth. But despite its great size, it's still nonetheless a tiny speck compared to the amount of space in our solar system. Here, here's a closer look. Jupiter, like all the Jovian planets, contains a rocky metallic core surrounded by large quantities of gaseous materials, mostly hydrogen and helium. The bands you see here are clouds of differing composition moving sideways along with the rotation of the planet. We'll talk more about Jupiter and its rather interesting moons later. Remember, right now our focus is on the relative sizes, so I thought it would be uh, helpful for you to see the size of Jupiter compared to planet Earth. Yeah, there we go. What I've done here is I've made Jupiter as far away from us as the moon. To scale from here to here is about 384,000 kilometers. Of course, Jupiter is much farther away from us. But what if it were this close, as close as our moon? What might it look like in our sky? Something like this. It would really fill the sky now, wouldn't it? Jupiter is huge. But, of course, Jupiter is so far away that it only appears to us as a tiny point, something like this. There's a planet adjacent to the crescent moon. But hey, you know of course that the planets and the moon are not sources of light, right? Rather, they merely reflect the light coming from the sun. But the planets are so far away that they appear as points of light, much like stars, which you know are sources of light. This long-time exposure image of the night sky shows the many stars surrounding us, all of them very, very distant from our solar system. Over the course of a human lifespan, these stars appear to be fixed in their relative positions. Though, as we'll be discussing later, the stars are in fact moving around. The North Star, for example, hasn't always been over the North Pole. The planets, by contrast, can be seen to move in their relative positions over a matter of a, a week or even days. So how can we tell the planets from the stars? Well, as is obvious from this long-time exposure image, the planets tend to be brighter than most stars. That's Venus and Jupiter adjacent to the moon. Also, while stars appear to be fixed in their positions, the planets, they tend to wander. The very term planet is derived from the Greek word for wanderer. So early astronomers saw planets as wandering stars. Today, of course, we know they're not stars at all, which becomes apparent as you look at them through a good telescope, which I encourage you to do. The next planet out is Saturn, which is a favorite target of most amateur astronomers. With a decent amateur telescope, you can see the rings of Saturn for yourself. But these high-resolution images you're seeing here were captured by telescopes not from the ground, but from aboard space probes that were launched many years ago. The details we can now see are astounding. Zoom into Saturn's North Pole and you'll see there's a storm brewing, also known as the Red Rose of Saturn. It's similar to a hurricane on Earth, but energized only in part by the condensation of water. Much of Saturn's Red Rose remains a mystery. Beyond Saturn is planet Uranus, about twice as far out as planet Saturn, or about 19 times farther from the Sun than planet Earth. And beyond Uranus is Neptune, which is about 
30 times farther from the sun than is Earth. Look, the distances are vast. The amount of space is vast and beyond common sense. Look at how small the sun appears in this scale. So, would the sun be visible from Neptune? Absolutely. Don't forget, the sun is quite bright. From Neptune, the sun would be quite visible, but it would appear as no more than an unusually bright star. How about a quick trip to Uranus? It's a gaseous blue planet, but not quite as blue as Neptune. The blue from these outer, outer planets comes primarily from the presence of methane gas, which absorbs the red frequencies of sunlight while reflecting the blue. Neptune appears more blue than Uranus simply because it contains more methane in its upper atmosphere. Some of you might be wondering about Pluto. This is a small, rocky outer object found in the 1930s. It's smaller than our moon and about twice as far from the sun as planet Uranus. But in 2006, Pluto was reclassified from a planet to what we call a KBO, or Kuiper Belt Object. We'll be talking more about KBOs in a subsequent lesson, so hang on for that. Well, there you have it, a quick introduction to the eight planets of our solar system to scale. Please understand that what we have most of in this solar system is empty space. Our planets are just tiny specks by comparison. That's a perspective that most people don't have, but now you do. In the next lesson, we'll be talking about how our solar system came into being. Fun stuff. Till then, good science to you. <laughs>